I wanted to talk about the retail game that we closed last class with. And remember that each team was a store and each team had to price, choose a price low or high. And while we played a repeated game, the game was repeated only for a limited number of times. And so you didn't have time to really learn about each other and you didn't have a long extended play. Uh, anyway, the, this game, especially when it's played just in a single shot game, which was more like what we play than others. But anyway, when, when the, this type of game is played uh, in a single shot, it's called a prisoner's dilemma for reasons that I'm going to explain in this screencast. Uh, I'm also going to introduce a new convention to um, express payoffs as rankings rather than, say, dollar values of profits or whatever. So uh, we're going to rank our payoffs from best, the number one outcome, to worst, number four, the worst outcome. Um, and you could equally make four the best and one the worst. It's somewhat arbitrary. But anyway, it's a useful convention uh, to, to use when you're talking about games in general. And then I'm going to show you how we can generalize in, and in two dimensions uh, analyze an end player game like the one we had in class. All right, here we, here we go. Uh, first off, note that this is a prisoner's dilemma. I, uh, I, um, well, I guess first, let's, let's back up. This is a game. Why is it a game? We have the three elements of a game, the players, Old Navy and Forever 21, the strategies, each store can either price high or price low in a given period, uh, and we've got payoffs. And the payoffs are in ranking form. So First is your first best payoff, second is your second best payoff, third is your third best pay payoff, and four is um, your fourth best payoff. And I really like game mat matrices that for two-player games that take this form where they're in a square grid. There's, well, a square grid, whether there's two actions or three actions or four, whatever. And then each, each uh, entry in the grid, we know this entry means that Old Navy priced high and Forever 21 priced high. And by, by slicing the payoff matrix with a diagonal, I know that up and to the right, that's Forever 21. Low and to the left, that's Old Navy. And that saves me having to type out, you know, Forever 21 payoff, comma, Old Navy payoff, or some sort of key when you, when you list the payoffs just horizontally, as is done in the homework problems many times say you have to tell give people more information to tell them which payoff is which but this this format we know autumn right away this this payoff up here is for forever 21. all right so this is this is a game and this is a a very famous classic game so although it's not by any means the only classic games or even necessarily the most common but there's a lot of situations collective action problems in particular um, that can be ex expressed by a, a prisoner's dilemma. And, and here where the incentives facing individual players in the game are such that um, individuals playing their own personal best strategies end up bringing the whole system to, a, to an inferior outcome and uh, inferior from the point of view of the player. Uh, in, in this case, in, the, in a retail game, it's actually bad for the players, but good for consumers if if the game really went this way. So let's let's uh, think about this game. And in so doing, I want to emphasize some skills for solving these games. And I'm going to give out some definitions as we go. I guess I'll write out the definition so you know what to look for. We're going to talk about uh, dominant strategies. And we're going to talk about uh, a Nash equilibrium. These aren't part of our game, they're just sort of notes on the side. All right, back to my pointer. Uh, let's think about Old Navy's problem. What should Old Navy do? Well, let's, Old Navy's in a game with Forever 21, so Old Navy's going to anticipate what Forever 21's going to do and then try to do the best it can. So Old Navy's action, let's suppose 
Old Navy thinks Forever 21 is going to price high. And in that case, Old Navy is thinking about this column here. And Old Navy could price high and get its second best outcome or price low and get its first best outcome. And in, in these rational self-interest models, we assume that Old Navy is just interested in Old Navy. And uh, in, in that case, if uh, Old Navy anticipates Forever 21 pricing high, Old Navy is going to price low. Well, let's think about what Old Navy would do if it thought Forever 21 was going to price low. Well, uh, Old Navy could price high and get its worst outcome or price low and get its second worst, which is better than the worst outcome. So by the logic of rational self-interest model, uh, Old Navy is going to price low. And, and actually, if we, it's a symmetric game, so we'd find, and I'll leave it to you to do, if we went through Forever 21's um, possibilities, we'd find that no matter what Old Navy did, price high or price low, Forever 21 would choose to price low. And this is called a dominant strategy. A dominant strategy exists for a player when whatever its rival does, the best strategy to play is the same. That's a dominant strategy. You're going to want to play that no matter what. Um, both players are going to price low, and that's going to turn out to be a Nash equilibrium. Remember the definition of a Nash equilibrium? The Nash equilibrium is the equilibrium where every player, given what the other player has done, is satisfied. In other words, no player wants to change its action given the actions of everybody else. And let, let's just go through that a little bit carefully because um, a lot of player, a lot of students who have had the competitive model going into this unit will have this misguided intuition. It's the problem I have with the rhetorical strategy of a lot of economics textbooks, but they, have, they give students this misguided sense that, oh, the market just goes to the best spot by itself. Well, no, it's, there's a lot of times it doesn't. Um, and uh, anyway, we won't go into that anymore at this point. But, but let's think, why, why isn't price high, price high? We see that's a better strategy for both of them. They're, they each get their second best instead of their third best. Uh, well, let's think about that through the lens of this Nash equilibrium. Given that Old Navy is pricing high, does Forever 21 want to change its actions and price low? Yeah, yes, it does. So that, that rules it out right there. And we find that Old Navy also wants to change its action given that Forever 21 is pricing high. So that's not a Nash equilibrium. Why not? Because given what one, all you have to do is find one player that wants to change their action given what the other did. Here, both want to, but... Um, anyway, so that's not a Nash equilibrium. You, you can rule out the other ones. Let's, let's say we were here where um, Old Navy is pricing low, very happy, getting its best outcome, and Forever 21 is pricing high. Well, given that Forever 21 is pricing high, does Old Navy want to change? No, Old Navy doesn't want to change. But given that Old Navy is pricing low, does Forever 21 want to change? Yes, three is better than four. So this one's out. And then finally, if we were at in the situation where uh, Forever 21 was pricing low and Old Navy were pricing high, we'd find Old Navy would want to change its action. And given that the only need one of you only need to find one player wanting to change its action, that rules it out from being a Nash equilibrium. All right. Then the last thing I just want to show you something. We can analyze the game that we played in class with many. We only have two dimensions here, but we can think about a, a many party pr prisoner's dilemma by, by thinking of one of the players on one, uh, on one side of the game and think of everybody else on the other. And so here we've got that same game here. Each store faces the situation where they could price high and price low. So does our typical one. And given that Old Navy is pricing high, the other stores wish they would price low. If they anticipate Old Navy to price high, they're also going to want to price low. And, um, and, and 
the same if, if Old Navy thinks all other stores are going to price high, it's going to want to price low. If this one player thinks everybody's going to price low, it's going to price low. Dominant strategy, Nash equilibrium. And, and notice that even though we're limited by this two-dimensional framework, that we can actually handle an in-person game this way. So uh, uh, prisoner's dilemmas are, are used to analyze why uh, countries in the world um, find it difficult to arrive at a, um, an agreement to all limit the amount of carbon they put in the atmosphere at the same time. They are used to uh, look at in-person um, commercial games, you know, games played in the commercial arena like this one. Um, anyway, they're, they're very flexible to a lot of situations.